Screw you, freaking brass! Die! Hanasaki Kensuke saves a girl from a bunch of goons, while a cursed boy named Kobayashi Hoshio laments that he isn't able to die. Hanasaki is shown to be a part of the boy detective club, led by Akechi Koguro, who is called sensei by all his disciples. The next day, Akechi and his assistant Inoue Ryo talk to Inspector Nao Nakamura about a rogue robot terrorizing the city. Meanwhile, Hanasaki chases after a dog as part of his mission, and he is instructed by cybergirl Noro Makoto. Akechi reaches the police headquarters and finds a villain named 20 faces in disguise. He catches him red-handed, but the mastermind makes his escape. Now the dog leads Hanasaki to Kobayashi, who is sulking in the corner. It attacks him, but gets killed by the cursed boy's barrier, after which he makes his escape in tears. Kobayashi tries to kill himself after that, but isn't able to do so, as his powers prevent it. Now learns that the robot monster was just a distraction to infiltrate her office, and then Hanasaki goes after Kobayashi. An intense chase follows as the cursed boy shows off his powers, but Hanasaki eventually catches up to him and tries to strike a friendship. However, he notices a fire and has to make an exit to help some innocent victims. Hanasaki struggles to save one of the survivors, but Kobayashi makes his way inside to help him out, even though he can't get close to him. Impressed by his abilities, Hanasaki offers a spot at the boys' detective club and promises to kill Kobayashi if he helps him out. However, Inoue arrives and attacks Kobayashi without knowledge, so the cursed boy runs away after chopping off his legs, which are shown to be fake. Now Akechi practices his singing skills with a VR device, while a client named Mieko has to deal with the rookies in his office. Hanasaki tries to cheer her up, but then she reveals that she has found some threat letters in her boyfriend's drawer. Inoue offers to take up the job, even though Hanasaki finds it boring. Our hero grabs a meal, but learns that his wallet is missing, as he had left it with Kobayashi. Noro berates Hanasaki for being careless, and then she tracks his guard. Our hero tells Akechi about Kobayashi, and then he finds the cursed boy trying to feast on a meal. They chat for a bit, but then Hanasaki has to take off for his mission, so he brings Kobayashi along. Akechi realizes that the threat letters have cheap oil on them, so our hero acts on this lead. Kobayashi isn't able to control his hunger, so he feasts on a meal. While Hanasaki relies on Inoue's disguise to make it inside the target building. Kobayashi tastes poison inside the soup, and then the team deduces that Mieko is the actual culprit, as she had made the poisoned water. The boyfriend is simply a pawn, but he unfortunately dies when he tries to prove Mieko's innocence by drinking the water. Luckily, Hanasaki and Kobayashi reach Mieko in time before she can poison her target. The villain is taken away into custody, and Hanasaki congratulates Kobayashi for his efforts. This bond seems to make the cursed boy feel again, so he decides to carry on with a friendship. Hanasaki continues to tease Kobayashi, but all his efforts are laid to waste. The cursed boy throws a fit, but then he bumps into Akechi and almost slashes him with his barrier. The sensei remains unharmed and goes on to explain the laws of his agency. Now Hanasaki and the cursed boy are briefed on a missing person named Kochi, and they get to work. However, Kobayashi makes a mess in the van and it angers Inoue. He feels insulted and runs away, but then Hanasaki cheers him up and reminds him of his promise. The team gets a lead on Kochi and try to investigate it, but a infused entry into an old age home. The boys manage to sneak their way inside and bump into an old man who is one of the residents. They try to talk to him, but he calls security on them, so they run away. Luckily, they're saved by another old man who tells them where they can find Kochi. However, the boys notice something odd about the foster home and follow one of the residents who is forcefully taken to an operation room. That's when they learn that a doctor named Kyomoto is harvesting his patient's organs for his own greed. Hanasaki acts fast and uses Kobayashi to expose the scam, after which a chaotic sequence follows. The mission is a success, but Hanasaki is the only one who is still supporting Kobayashi in the detective boys club. Either way, Akechi vouches for the cursed boy and allows him to stay. The next day, a girl tries to flirt with Inoue, but he can't take a hint and simply assumes that she wants to talk to his friend Katsuda. Meanwhile, there's an incident that has been caused by 20 faces, and the cops rush to the scene. Now, we meet Yamane and the eccentric doctor Otomo, who fools around with his gadgets. Hanasaki learns about a new mission while he's in school, but Akechi doesn't allow him to take part in it as he believes his education is important. Later, the sensei is made to watch a video letter sent by 20 faces, where the villain states that he's kidnapped the officer from the accident and wants to play a game with his life in the balance. Now talks to Akechi about his next move, but then he has to stop a fight between Inoue and Kobayashi. He decides to assign the kidnapping case to them so that they can get along with each other. In a flashback, 
we learn that Katsura is an old friend of Inoue, but they drifted apart after he lost his legs. After some initial brainstorming, Inoue and Kobayashi follow a map that was provided by the villain and enter a sewer. They find some henchmen and try to hide, but Kobayashi exposes their location. Inoue puts up a fight, but is beaten down, and surprisingly the cursed boy doesn't help out. The goons escape, and the place starts to flood, so Kobayashi uses his powers, but is unable to break through the walls. Now Akechi confronts a survivor of the accident, who is revealed to be a messenger for 20 faces. Class is finally over, so Hanasaki rushes out of class and is alerted by Akechi to act fast as they have less than an hour. Our hero begs Katsuda for help and he eventually gives in after learning that Inoue is in danger. Meanwhile, Kobayashi is told to escape through an opening and alert everyone about the fake map while Inoue struggles to make it out. A flashback shows us how he lost his legs in an incident with Katsuda and this is what led to their conflict. All hope seems lost for Inoue as he starts to drown, but then Katsuda saves him as Kobayashi had managed to notify everyone about the change in plan. Time is running out and the media also arrives to cover the incident, so Akechi and Hanasaki rush to 20 faces and declare victory. However, However, the villain plays dirty and toys with the heroes by launching a whirlpool. The villain is about to escape with his hostage, but then Kobayashi helps out at the very last moment and secures his team a vital win. The villain becomes cranky and leaves, after which everyone gets to enjoy their victory. Kobayashi tries to drop down from a building, but survives his fall, and Hanasaki simply records his progress. The boys pass some more time as they mess around, and then Hanasaki decides to take up a case with Kobayashi in Akechi's absence. First, they meet no Noro and her owl, but all she offers is some tea. Noro asks Kobayashi for his personal details so that she can add him to her database, but he doesn't know anything about himself, not even his birthday. Later, the boys meet Otomo and Yamane, both of whom are fascinated to see how magical Kobayashi is. Later, the boys decide to meet Inoue and Katsuda at the library, but they only get berated for being careless. Hanasaki finally decides to get to work, but the boys only mess up their cases throughout the day. They don't lose hope and follow after a cheating woman for their next mission. An intense sequence follows, and then Hanasaki prepares to expose her for having an affair, but Kobayashi messes it up by directly confronting the suspect. Our hero is left feeling dejected, but then he finds some kids who have lost their drone in a factory. He decides to get it back, but is about to lose it inside the lava. That's when Kobayashi arrives and grabs the drone while shielding himself from the lava. The boys come back after a hard day of work, and then we learn that the cases were just a distraction for the others to arrange a surprise party for Kobayashi. The cursed boy is a amazed by this gesture and tries to act tough but eventually lets out a smile that Hanasaki captures. The boys play a history game, and then Akechi calls back to one of his memories during the war. We learn that he was once friends with 20 faces, as they used to work together. Now asks him what happened between him and the villain, but he ignores the question and goes to sing a song. Now Hanasaki meets his dad who seems to be very strict, and we learn that he is an adopted child. Our hero goes on to tease Kobayashi some more, after which it is revealed that Akechi used to be called Sosuke and was abused by his first father. It's time for another mission, and Hanasaki is summoned immediately. Akechi calls back to the time he was rescued from his dad by a detective, but he lost him in the middle of a mission. This prompted him to leave his first father to die when he left for Japan and took on his hero detective's name, which was also Akechi. Twenty Faces caught on to this, and he had promised to provide Akechi with thrills for the rest of his life. Suddenly, there is a broadcast where the members of a housing committee declare independence from the rest of Japan. Hanasaki watches this, and it triggers some memories as the leader is none other than Haruni, his missing brother. Hanasaki rushes to the office as quickly as he can, but Akechi tells him to keep quiet till the client leaves. Hanasaki gets into an argument with his team, and it leads to Akechi to ban him from leaving the building. Kobayashi is told to keep an eye on Hanasaki, but he lets him escape without any resistance. Hanasaki rushes to the housing committee, where he meets Haruni, but is knocked out with an injection. He wakes up and is reunited with his adopted brother, who shows him around the place after marking him with an identifier. Meanwhile, Akechi thinks back to the time Hanasaki had approached him to find Haruni. Now, Hanasaki is taken to meet the mother of the community, and she shows him her army of messenger pigeons. Some choppers come to confront Haruni, but are sent away by some warning shots. Then we see a flashback where Akechi saves Hanasaki from some bullies. This prompted him to work for his sensei, so that he could eventually find his brother. Now, Akechi is finally asked to investigate the matter by now, and the team gets to work. The police try to infiltrate the community, but it's of no use, 
as the automated weapons keep firing at them. Now joins Akechi and the team as they make their way to the spot. And then, Haruni tells Hanasaki how he managed to start everything. However, we learned that his mom had created this entire mess just so that she could make some money as she's actually working with 20 faces. Kobayashi makes his way inside the community and deflects all the firepower to move forward. That's when Haruni reveals that Akechi had actually found him much earlier, but refused to bring him back to Hanasaki after seeing how he was brainwashed by his mom. Akechi finally confronts the villains, but Hanasaki tries to stop him. However, Haruni is about to shoot them both, so now seemingly kills him. It leads to a confrontation between Hanasaki and Akechi, so our hero is laid off from detective work for the time being. He is also told to keep quiet at home, so that this family name is not tarnished. Hanasaki goes back to the office to get his things, but loses his patience and vents out his frustration at Kobayashi. Akechi reprimands him so he runs away and bumps into 20 faces. Hanasaki is knocked down with some spray and taken away by the villain. The next day, Inoue and Kobayashi meet Otomo and Yamane to test out some more of their creations. Hanasaki wakes up inside a secret hideout and the 20 faces reveals that Haruni is still alive. Then, he shows Hanasaki some of the indirect deaths he had caused due to his investigations. Our hero breaks down into tears and the 20 faces hacks into a conference being held by Hanasaki's dad. Meanwhile, Akechi and the crew are made to investigate a haunted mansion. Twenty Faces tries to bring Hanasaki over to his side by showing him a bullet wound he had received from Akechi. Trap doors keep opening up in front of the detective team, but Kobayashi withstands all of them, and then he spots a mystery intruder. The team figures that the ghost is the client herself, and then Kobayashi breaks down the building. Hanasaki is shown a live stream of the investigation, and he sees Akechi saying he's fed up of him. This is all it takes to push him over to the edge, and he joins Twenty Faces. The villain openly challenges Akechi by showing Hanasaki as his hostage, but this turns out to be an act. The detective sensei decides to handle the matter by himself and stops Inoue from following him. Now, Hanasaki's dad receives a call from 20 Faces, who blackmails him into granting him access to his robot factory. Hanasaki is made to deactivate the security, and then we see Katsuda teaming up with the detectives to save their friend. They run into Akechi's cat, which has some intel, this proving that he had really anticipated this. Meanwhile, Otomo breaks into Noro's house and helps her with locating Hanasaki. The robots take over the building and attack the hostages, but Akechi comes to the rescue and faces off against them. An intense sequence follows, and Akechi barely manages to escape the first round. However, he begins to tire down, so Hanasaki takes control of a giant robot and attacks his sensei. Akechi realizes what's going on and confronts Hanasaki, after which, he breaks into his hideout spot. Akechi eventually manages to convince Hanasaki to join him again, but 20 faces shows his true colors and kicks the orphan boy away. Akechi is about to be taken as a hostage, but then Kobayashi comes to the rescue. He is attacked by a giant robot army, but doesn't take any damage and moves forward. He destroys some of the machines and rushes towards Hanasaki, while Noro tries to hack the robots. However, he isn't able to do so, and Otomo makes fun of her and gets to work. Meanwhile, Inoue and Katsuda save the other hostages and Kobayashi eventually makes it to his buddy. Our heroes are all cornered, so 20 faces taunts them all before launching an attack on Inoue and Katsuda. Luckily, Otomo hacks the system and the robots lose control. However, 20 faces has one last trick up his sleeve, as the hostages become the attackers now. The villain pushes Akechi to kill Hanasaki to avoid a disaster, thus causing a dilemma. Our hero has had enough of the mind games, and 20 faces makes it worse when he mentions that Hanasaki's dad had loved him all along. Hanasaki jumps off the building to take his life, but Kobayashi manages to save him and knocks down the gunman with a gas bomb. Unfortunately, this also knocks out Akechi, so 20 faces makes his escape. The disaster is luckily averted, and then Kobayashi asks Hanasaki to keep his promise to kill him. And that's the end of part 1. Like, share, and subscribe, and show some love if you want to see part 2 ASAP. Hit the bell icon for regular updates. See you soon!